Hello. So just now we are talking about your redox gradient for the different E0 values of cytochromes. So we have the different cytochromes and those cytochromes can be considered from their different E0 values such that we can have a typical generation for redox gradient. from one particular species to the other. In that case, if we just want to burn glucose, so the process is basically our glucose burning and that glucose burning process takes place in such a way that the corresponding energy for that. is released gradually in the slowest possible manner and stored in the form of ATP. So, we should be able to synthesize large amount of ATP molecules during this burning process. So, like NAD plus we can have on the other hand several other biological reducing agent one such is quinone based one. which is reduced coenzyme, quinone coenzyme reduced COQ coenzyme quinone which is OHOH AME or some typical substitution. Then on the left, you can have two MEO functions, methoxide functions. So, this particular biological reducing agent, we can determine its corresponding E0 value, that means the E half value, which is minus 80 millivolt. So, this particular system is tagged for that. So, at a particular pH value, you can give this particular system for its corresponding oxidation as well as <coughs> reduction because experimentally when we measured by any cyclic voltammetric technique, we always get some value which is your E half value. So, at that potential if you push it from left to right or right to left, you get the corresponding either reduction potential or oxidation potential that is why we consider these as our E half potential. Then this is useful to reduce cytochrome B and this cytochrome B has a corresponding potential of 50 millivolt. Hmm. So, it is negative 1. So, this will be reduced by this reduced coenzyme Q. Then we have cytochrome C 1 which has a potential of 220 millivolt. So, gradually we are moving from left to right. So, E 0 value is increasing. So, as we are moving from left to right, we are getting strongest possible oxidizing agent on the right hand side. Hmm. Then cytochrome C 1, then cytochrome C. So, so we see that we are talking so much about the corresponding metal environment, how it is related to the protein part, but the basic interest lying on the corresponding redox potential 
which is iron centered. So, iron is giving you electron and iron is taking up the electron. So, the corresponding electron transport proteins will be responsible for its redox catalysis. Hmm. So, this electron transfer shuttle will be useful for our redox catalytic reactions. So, for cytochrome C it is 260. Then comes one important group of system which we will slowly study that one after another is a very complex molecule which is a combined form of cytochrome A and cytochrome A3. So, all these levels you will see that we are talking about the different cytochrome, but the different levels are their different porphyrin units and these two together that means you have now a complex system. That means you have one cytochrome A system as well as a cytochrome A3 system. So, basically if we do not tell anything more beyond that you should be able to tell that it has one iron center which is in cytochrome A environment and another cytochrome center which is in cytochrome A3 environment, but it is much more complex it has two other metal ions also present. So, collectively this system is known as in a simplest way is cytochrome C oxidase because it is on the right hand side of the cytochrome C and it will oxidize our cytochrome C. So, it is cytochrome C oxidase because this is a little bit complex molecule. Then this is attached to our most important reaction what we are thinking about which is the reduction of dioxygen molecule to water in presence of 4 protons. So, is a 4 electron reduction process and that 4 electron reduction process is taking place around 800 millivolt. So, these all these potentials and this one is 450. So, all these species when we talk about the corresponding reduction of the O2 system. So, experimentally we can all determine these values because the in the intermediate form we will find that O2 by getting one single electron can be reduced to its superoxide then when it gets another electron it goes to peroxide unit and those E 0 values are all different. Then it can go for the different radical pathways, so it can go for O H dot and that O H dot is also reacting with again for O 2 molecule or water molecule. So, there are a large number of oxygen based species available and those oxygen species will have all different E 0 values. So, right now what you see that this 800 millivolt is pretty high which can be utilized for the oxidation of this species which in turn can be utilized for the oxidation for cytochrome C, cytochrome C 1, cytochrome B and ultimately the biologically available reducing agent. So, this particular case when this cytochrome B we get this cytochrome B you see that this potential is pretty less compared to the value what we get for cytochrome C as 260 millivolt. That means, it uh, has a different environment around iron and the protein part in this case is not covalently attached, protein is not covalently attached. Hmm. So, not only that porphyrin environment, but also the protein environment can control the different E 0 values. So, this E 0 value can control the corresponding thermodynamic aspect of this electron transfer behavior, but we should little bit aware of the thing that what is the corresponding rate of 
electron transfer. So, experimentally these rate of electron transfer as well as theoretically we can calculate it out from some theoretical values. So, in this case we will find that if we just simply determine the k observed values in second inverse, we will find there is a drastic change in values for all these typical biological molecules compared to that of the iron center which has typically ligated to some simple ligand system. So, this k of values for a system where it is cytochrome c and which is settling between the iron oxidation states of plus 2 and plus 3 giving a value of 5 into 10 to the power 4 second inverse. Compared to that if we use a iron tris complex that means, if we orthophenanthrolin hmm, orthophenanthrolin like bipyridine hmm, if we orthophenanthrolin again it is settling between 2 and 3, but the determined rate constant in this case is in the order of 10 to the power 7. So, we see that the simple molecule like iron tris phenantholine <coughs> which has iron center surrounded by 6 nitrogen donor atoms of orthophenantholine, but it is showing some faster electron transfer rate. So, sometime the slowing down of the electron transfer rate is also important not only the corresponding E 0 values, because in these cases some of these cases we will find we will basically find out some delta E value. Hmm? Say threshold delta E value is required for one step to another and that threshold E 0 value or the delta E value is be responsible for a corresponding free energy change and that free energy change will be utilized for our ATP synthesis. Not that all these delta E values are useful for our ATP synthesis. So, this rate for that particular electron transfer is also important. So, what is happening there that means, in case of cytochrome C you have the protein envelope and only a part which is nothing but 20 percent of the porphyrin ring. So, 20 percent of the edge of the ring that means, the porphyrin ring is exposed to the system, rest is covered by the protein chain. So, that basically slows down the electron transfer rate. So, when it is covered with the protein chain only a part is available there for electron transfer and basically in all these biological system the electron transfer will take place through a mechanism which is outer sphere in nature. because we know that there are two types of electron transfer one is outer sphere electron transfer another is the inner sphere electron transfer, but in all these important biological molecule based on iron because the availability of a very less amount of exposed area for electron transfer only the outer sphere mechanism is operating and which is responsible for slowing down the corresponding electron transfer rate. So, this particular thing is also tells us that some of these molecules what we know that from our childhood days about the cyanide poisoning. This also basically disrupts the cytochrome electron transfer chain, hmm. cytochrome electron transfer 
chain is hampered. It is not that the cyanide poisoning is due to the binding of cyanide to the hemoglobin or myoglobin molecule, but now you see the same type of molecule is available for binding your cyanide group. So, your thioether binding will go when cytochrome C is directly involved and that sixth position is now occupied by your cyanide group. And already we have seen in this case of molecules that <coughs> corresponding uh, electron subtle is also important and in cytochrome molecules we have only the low spin states. So, these low spin states are there and so long it is bound to a methyl function it can settle between the ferrous state and the ferric state. But when it is bound to the cyanide function it cannot settle between these two oxidation state. So, when there is a binding of cyanide function the Fe 3 plus which is getting stabilized there and cannot take part in electron transfer or electron subtle from one side to the other. So, this also tells us that how some groups are available in the biological system. If these groups are available there which can stabilize the high oxidation state of the metal center. That means, in this particular case we are stabilizing the ferric state, but if is stabilized more that means, we are changing the corresponding E 0 value. So, E 0 value is changing. So, it is stabilized at that particular point and you cannot reduce back to the corresponding ferrous state. So, this particular information prompted us to know that this particular porphyrin coordination is we are keeping constant. We are talking about the coordination from the fifth side as well as from the six sides. So, in one case it is thioether sulfur and the metazole unit, but you can have some nitrogen from this side as well as nitrogen from this side and both of them are imidazole nitrogen. So, this gives us an opportunity to know the corresponding change in the E 0 values for synthetic molecules as well. So, if you have a laboratory prepared porphyrin ligand you get the corresponding iron compound and then its corresponding bis imidazole adduct that means, the coordination number 5 and 6 is occupied by imidazole groups only. So, it is basically a simple model compound which can be made in the laboratory. And this particular function can be compared with some other system where you have this as well as 1 by S M E any group say it can be P H S M E and other by N M E. And if you determine experimentally by cyclic voltammetric measurements the corresponding E 0 values for these two compounds, we will find that related to the same cytochrome C where you have. So, this is equivalent to our cytochrome C and this particular one is equivalent to some other molecule which is cytochrome C 3 basically, where the thioether coordination is not there instead of that you have the imidazole group of this. So, determination of these two basically tells us that already we have seen that for cytochrome C the potential was 260 millivolt and this can be determined which is minus 205 
millivolt. So, what basically you get? You get the corresponding difference of these two which is 465 millivolt and that difference is due to these two coordinations. So, from the entirely same type of environment and entirely same type of molecule, if we are able to substitute one coordinating group from one position that means, the position number 6 say to by, uh, by the other group we will find that there is a drastic change in the corresponding potential value and this change in potential value can be correlated to the binding from the thioether function. Thioether group and some amount of the environment. So, there will be some effect from the environment also if we are unable to restrict the same environment. So, protein environment or some solvent environment because when we go for cyclic voltammetric measurements. Hmm, so, during this cyclic voltammetric measurements what we will find, we will find that we all know that is a typical response for a voltammogram we get. So, if it is in the positive direction is a cyclic one and this gives us a corresponding anodic peak potential and this gives us a corresponding cathodic peak and from the average of these two we get the E half values. So, these E half values we report against some <coughs> electrode that means, against normal hydrogen electrode or saturated calomel electrode or silver silver chloride <coughs> electrode. That means, you have some reference electrode into the system and when we measure in aqueous medium we should also report the corresponding pH values, but in this particular case when we talk about the environment we immediately see that if some of the compound say some iron compound is a model compound say. So, if it is a FeL 3 compound and if we can measure in a different non aqueous solvents. So, non aqua solvents like simple example for that is acetonitrile one and another is dichloromethane. So, that gives us some very good idea that how the environment is also playing some role to find out the corresponding E 0 values. So, when we report this potential not only the reference electrode, not only the pH, not only the solvent, but working electrode also we report that means, what type of working electrode because in most of these measurement we use platinum electrode for the measurement, but in this particular case we will find there is a difference in potential when we measure the corresponding E half value by cyclic voltammetry in acetonitrile solvent or dichloromethane solvent. So, dielectric constant for the medium is different and that dielectric constant is basically changing the corresponding E 0 values for simple corresponding uh, E half values for any iron 3 compound. It can be your iron bipedial compound or it can be your iron orthophenolthane compound. So, environment has always some role to play, but in this particular case your protein environment which is a bigger one and that protein environment is basically controlling the corresponding E 0 values. and basically it is controlling our corresponding catalysis which is dependent on the redox property of the system. Hmm. So, if we see this typical redox catalysis for this system and we will be talking for a potential scale now because we have 
seen the corresponding electron transfer chain. Now, the potential for these is 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4 volt to plus 0 0.8 volt. We know now what is that 0 0.82 is your O2 and in this particular area that means minus 0 0.4 is your some ferridoxin molecule now because we all know these ferridoxins are iron sulfur proteins and those are very good electron transfer agents. So, ferridoxin then the entire chain what we have written just now NAD plus then flavoprotein then all cytochromes. Hmm? So, cytochrome C, yeah, cytochrome A and A3 then it is going for your O2. Hmm? So, now we know the corresponding E0 value. Hmm? So, this is in volt. So, this particular case, so when you have the different steps and already we know the different steps and now the cycle is like this that if you have NAD plus which is settling between NADH. So, this is the oxidized form and another is the reduced form and which is attached to the corresponding reducing agent which is flavin based nicotinamide based and the flavin based. So, FAD and the corresponding reduced form is FAD H 2. Then we are bringing the quinone the coenzyme quinone. Hmm. So, you have quinone and hydroquinone. So, it is oxidized by cytochrome B now, which is based on Fe 3 and the reduced one is based on Fe 2. So, quinone, hydroquinone, no sorry, this, this arrow will be like this both the arrows on the downward and both will be upward. Hmm. So, F E 2, F E 3 then cytochrome B then C 1 again it is F E 2 and F E 3 only. So, this part is quite simple it only F E 2 and F E 3. Then after <coughs> cytochrome C1 we have C this is also based on Fe now 3 this is Fe 2 then A and A3. O2 to H2. Hmm. <coughs> so,
So, this will move from one step to another. So, within this scale this N A D H and N A D plus is close to minus 0 0.28 volt then this one minus 0 0.05 volt next one is 0 0.08 volt then 0 0.05 but significantly these are changing from this place to plus 0 0.22 then plus 0 0.25 then plus 0 0.28 and plus 0 0.81 for oxygen. So, this particular change when we calculate for the reaction of ATP plus water giving rise to ADP plus inorganic phosphate. So, that particular reaction we know the corresponding energy involvement that for this particular synthesis or the hydrolysis the phosphate hydrolysis from ATP to ADP requires minus 7.3 kilo calorie per mole. So, if we can think of the total change from this end to that end. So, the total change from this particular end to that end is basically covering a window. So, is a potential window we call it. So, this potential window of 1.09 volt. So, that 1.09 volt can be calculated for its corresponding free energy change delta G 0. So, which will be equal to minus 50.28 kilo calorie. So, the total window if we consider that this much is your window and within this window you have the corresponding free energy change and now this is known for the hydrolysis of the ATP. So, you can think of that means, if we just correlate these two, you expect that 6 mole of ATP will be synthesized, but it is not that because you will have a corresponding threshold. That means, if you go back calculating this one, from here you can calculate the corresponding E0 value required for the hydrolysis or synthesis of ATP because these are connected the E 0 value and the free energy change. So, this value basically gives us some value which is nothing but 0 0.16 volt. So, this is the threshold magnitude for ATP synthesis then until and unless within this redox change you have a corresponding change of this magnitude you cannot get a corresponding ATP synthesis. So, here we will find that in this case you have the electron flow from here to there, then electron flow from this to that. So, in this way it will go. So, that means from the reduced form, this is 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 the reduced form. So, electron is moving like this. So, red arrows are pointing towards only the reductions, the reduced forms. So, we are starting from reduction from NADH and we are ending over here. So, electron is dumped on the O2 molecule and producing your water molecule. So, these junctions basically when the junction is 0.28, so at this point you will get a corresponding synthesis that means ADP on this side 
and at this side you will have ATP because this 0.28 is higher than 0.16. Hmm? So, at this step only you will have one ATP synthesis, then <coughs> at this that means 0.22 and this 0 0.05 minus 0 0.05 you will have that that means between these points ADP, ATP and lastly within this A A3 unit. So, basic thing what we are talking about here that instead of this 6 mole of ATP we will be getting 1, 2 and 3 ATP molecules. So, within this short chain because you have a huge and long chain and that can be broken up. So, between the cases where you have the cytochrome B and C 1. So, this particular case. So, cytochrome B and C 1 you should be nicely tell that where you have the large free energy change and between A and O 2. So, this A and O 2 in this region. So, A and O 2. So, there will be large free energy change apart from this NAD and FAD part. So, in these two part that means in the cytochrome chain if we consider from here the chain involving cytochrome B, cytochrome C 1, cytochrome C and cytochrome A and A 3. So, this particular part is a very small cytochrome electron transfer chain. So, this we, if we can consider cytochrome electron transfer chain we get only 2 mole of ATP synthesis. So, you have the sufficient amount of free energy change. responsible for the synthesis of ATP molecules which is our energy store. We can store the energy because we always when we burn the food material, when we burn the corresponding uh, uh, that uh, glucose molecule, we always try to produce large number of ATP molecules. So, this energy store can be we can have and in a step wise manner. So, when we have the reaction of NADH with O2. So, the entire chain can be broken up into several steps and all these discrete steps are very important and some of these steps can produce only the right number of ATP molecules. It is not that the entire change in corresponding delta E value will tell us that the total number of ATP molecules what will be synthesized in this particular process. So, this thing and the electron transfer from this cytochrome C to cytochrome A and A 3 is also very important because in this particular part we will get the synthesis of ATP molecules. So, with the involvement of O 2 we have the O 2 molecule in our hand and how we can activate this O 2 molecule that we should know. So, there are some molecules which we will consider as activators of O 2. The way we have seen that there are some molecules like myoglobin and hemoglobin which are very good for binding our O 2, but in this particular case there are some molecules which are responsible for activating your O2. So, these are our heme enzymes and these heme enzymes one we have seen that is cytochrome C. Now, the next one that the last one before the binding of this O2 molecule is our cytochrome C oxidase or 
cytochromes abbreviated as CCO. Hmm. So, this is a different type of cytochrome molecule and that cytochrome molecule will show us that this is basically a system is a complex system which has hemp protein plus some copper. Hmm. Some copper is brought to the system and copper has some important role to play to function as a cytochrome C oxidase which is nothing but the terminal component, the end component <coughs> terminal component of the respiratory chain in all aerobic organism because we are talking about thing which utilizing oxygen all aerobic organism. So, the simple reaction which is we all know that involving 4 proton and 4 electron giving rise to of the water molecule and the rate of the reaction is now is pretty well known to us also we have determined for that also that is the very first reaction. So, up to 250 molecules of oxygen is consumed per second. So, this very fast reaction for the corresponding reduction of dioxygen involving one such species which is our cytochrome C oxidase. And this particular one when we talk about that there is a point that this O2 will be there. So, you have this iron, if iron is involved not that copper for dioxygen binding, but copper is also known for dioxygen binding in hemocyanin we know. So, this iron if it is only penta coordinated. then we can think of binding of O2 from the 6 site. So, one such example for the cytochrome C oxidase we will find that iron center is made penta coordinated and then your O2 is allowed to bind to that iron center and it goes for its corresponding reactions. Then in another case we will find that this particular site can bind H2O2 as well. So, this is another group of molecules known as your activators of dioxygen and thirdly we will see that we can have some interactions where iron carbon bonds can be formed with the substrate. So, here the choice is very open now that you either your heme group which can be penta coordinated can bind O2 or your copper centers are involved for binding your dioxygen molecules. So, together with this system that means after studying this cytochrome C oxidase behavior, if <coughs> the iron porphyrin system is involved in a typical fashion, we will see how they are behaving in some other molecules like peroxidases because we are looking at something where your iron center is involved in binding 
your H2O2. So, if we can recall the corresponding binding of O2 to the iron center in myoglobin molecule that if there is some internal electron transfer and if we can feed one extra electron to that O2 it can be converted to O2 minus that means the superoxide anion. If we can put two electron to the system it can be a peroxide system. But we are we will be talking about something where you have the activators of O that means in this particular case whether we should be able to break the OO bond that is important. So, one such reactivity pattern for this will be for peroxidases then we will be talking about catalases and another different group of cytochrome molecule, but involving again iron and porphyrin is cytochrome P450. So, cytochrome C oxidase, peroxidases, catalases and cytochrome P450. So, this we will see in detail for this corresponding binding as well as the electron transfer to the adjacent cytochrome. So, when we have cytochrome C oxidase bearing him group, but now this Hem group is a different one, we label it as A3. Hmm. So, already I told you that one is A3 and another is Hem A. So, two iron centers, one in A3 and another in A. Then we have a copper center which is designated as B and another copper center which is known as A. So, this particular case so copper A is basically receiving the electron from our cytochrome C what we are studying so far. So, cytochrome C is giving electron to copper A site. So, in this copper A site is a dinuclear one and once this copper site is given and this copper site is nothing but we have one center as copper bound to 2 nitrogen and 2 sulfur which is CuA and left to that that means your him A side is imidazole nitrogen both of them are imidazole nitrogen. So, this imidazole nitrogen which is our copper A and this is our <coughs> cytochrome A containing him A function. Hmm. So, the porphyrin has that suitable substitution which we considered as him A and when that him A is attached to that protein part and the corresponding environment with respect to that bis imidazole unit we get a cytochrome A 1 and other one that means him A 3 which is our desired pentacoordinated species. Hmm. 
So, him A3 is your desired penta coordinated species, so which is our cytochrome A3 and this copper which is copper B which has 3 nitrogen donors. So, one side is vacant. So, you have the possibility of binding your O2 molecule to this iron as well as this copper. So, this consecutively transferring one electron at a time. So, when electron is pushed from cytochrome C to cytochrome A site and this particular case it can move from here to the him site and then him A site to him A3 site. So, oxidized cytochrome C what we will see in our next part that this oxidized one oxidized cytochrome C oxidase which we will consider as that is a particular state which is correspondingly the number of electron transferred to the catalytic site. That means, we are talking about only transfer of 4 electrons. Hmm. So, this particular state that means, the oxidized form. So, the number of electron transferred to the catalytic site of this M A 3 and copper B. Then we see that this can go for sequential electron transfer to another state which is E 1 and another state which is R 2. So, these are basically we will see we will just discuss all these, these are the different states. That means, in all these cases what we will see that means, the fully oxidized form or the fully reduced form and the intermediate form that means, you can get something that means, one electron reduced form or the one electron oxidized form. Then after reduction what we will find that after reduction if the system is allowed to bind to dioxygen molecule that is interesting to know. Because we have seen that you do not have any uh, anything uh, in your hand which will study in detail the corresponding binding and the elimination of this species, but we can monitor the corresponding spectra. So, the spectra of iron porphyrin system in your hand spectra of the iron porphyrin in your hand. Then this particular one when it is binding to O2 that is also in our hand. So, this is different that we know that the oxy hemoglobin or oxy myoglobin spectra is completely different from the corresponding deoxy form. So, in this particular case if you have some form of the cytochrome C oxidase in your hand then like we go for the synthetic molecule the corresponding oxidation or reduction which we can go by electrochemical oxidation as well as electrochemical reduction. So, in this particular case we will find that we can go for this reduction as well as oxidation. Then in one particular state you get you monitor spectroscopically that particular state then you reduce the other state go to the other state. So, these are typical levels basically that E and R form these are the typical level, but spectroscopically you can monitor this that one is the reduced form by one electron another is the reduced form by the one electron. Then what you can do from there you basically you can run in the same time the corresponding EPR spectrum. So, these two techniques basically the electronic spectra or invisible spectra or electronic absorption spectra together with the EPR spectra will confirm the corresponding nature of this O2 species 
because O2 thing is a notorious one in that sense because it is a paramagnetic one you have two unpaired electron on the O2. Then you are monitoring these two unpaired electron by moving it to superoxide species or the peroxide species which is a diamagnetic one. And at the same time the corresponding iron state which is 2 plus or 3 plus because this ferrous and ferric system has a characteristic EPR spectrum as well as your EV visible spectrum. So, if we can consider then that during this reduction process we already know that we are starting from some cytochromes which is in the plus 3 oxidation state. If we are able to the reduce that particular center to a plus 2 1 a plus 2 site and we know that the plus 2 site has little affinity for the 6 coordination site. So, it can be a penta coordinated species and by reduction if you are able to generate a penta coordinated ferrous one, if this is a ferrous one then that particular center will be utilized for dioxygen binding. So, not only the electron transfer now the system is much more complicated because now with the help of copper and the iron center you have to bind the dioxygen and then you have to put the electron on those bound dioxygen molecules. Okay. So, that we will see how this dioxygen is bound to the system and how you can transfer the electron to the dioxygen molecule.